Hi again, it's Jeff, your protopie expert, answering your protopie questions. Today's question is really cool because it comes from somebody who's using protopie to make props for a TV show. It comes from Andrew, and Andrew asks, I'd like to have an actor pretend they are typing on a keyboard while predetermined characters are displayed with each keystroke, regardless of what they actually typed. Is there a way to do this with protopie? There is, Andrew, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, before I jump in, I need to show you that I've got Protopie here on the left, and I'm mirroring my phone again using QuickTime on the right. And the reason for that is there are some slight things that we need to take into consideration when you actually run this on the device, which is what you're going to be using as the prop. Um, so while you can preview it and everything will work in the preview, there are a couple of things that we're going to deal with uh, on our phone later. Uh, we'll get into that as we go. In my Pi here, I have a mock conversation. I've got um, our actor has texted to somebody, where are you? And a response from somebody on the other end, I'm with Amy. I could really use your help right now. What we're going to do is we're going to have our actor type out a response. And we want this to be a predefined response. So it doesn't matter what they actually type. We're going to see their thumbs moving, but the response is just going to be canned. So we're going to use a variable to store this response. And if you don't remember, a variable is just a simple way to store a little bit of information. Your variables panel can be found in the bottom left. And if you click it once, it will expand it up. And the plus button allows you to make a new one. We only have one scene, so we're just going to choose for this scene. I'm going to name this text to type. And I'm going to make this a text type of variable. And here's where we're going to put whatever our canned response is. And let's say it's hold type. I'm on my way. All right, that's what we're going to have. And we're going to have this type as the, the thumbs move. We're going to see H O L D spelled out in the text field and then eventually get sent into the conversation. Now we can use the device's built-in keyboard, but there are some drawbacks to that. So here, let's just do this. I have a regular text field here and the way Protopie works, when you tap a text field and it gains focus, it brings up the device's natural keyboard. So um, let me move, I'm going to move this whole container up here. It's currently at 723, so we'll rem remember that. And I'm going to move this whole container up so that way it's going to be out of the way of the keyboard. And when I preview this, and I tap once in here, this keyboard comes up. And you'd think, ideally, this would be exactly what we want. But the problem with this, when I run it on my device, let's do that right now. I'm going to tap once in the input field. The keyboard comes up. Um, you have autocomplete that shows up at the top of the keyboard. And then as you type, you can see the exact letters that were typed. So it kind of ruins the effect to, to do it this way. So instead, I'm actually going to use a fake keyboard. They're not going to be typing on a real keyboard at all. So let's put this back. I think I said it was 723 was where you wanted it. 723. Yeah, that looks about right. And instead of using a real input here, I'm going to make a mock input field. And this one is just going to be a regular text field. So you have two options when creating a text field. One is an input field, which is what this is. And one is a text field. So instead, I'm going to make a new one here. And I'll make it underneath for now. Just draw it out here so it's the same. And we'll call this mock input field. And we're going to style it so it's the same as this one in here. So it has a background color of white. So we'll give it a fill of this white color. We want it to be, I think it's 52 pixels high. If we take a look at this. Yep, 52, 357 by 52. We change this to 52, and it has a radius of 26 to make it perfectly oval. It has a text size of 24 and this dark gray color. So we'll give this 24 and the dark gray color here. And there's some padding on here as well. So the padding is 20 to the left and right and 5 to the top and bottom. So let's add padding down here. And if I just type in here, you're going to see that it gives me the same value all around. I want to have different ones on the top and bottom. So I need to uncheck this one down here, equal padding for all sides. And we'll change this to 5 and this to 5. And lastly, I want to make sure the text is centered vertically in the space. So now it should look more or less the same. So if we give this, um, let's move this, oops, let's move this up a little bit so we can see them both. And if I give this a little bit of text, Hello. Actually, I, shouldn't. I need to move it a lot so we can see it when the keyboard comes up. And if I preview this actually, and I click on the text in here, well, I didn't move it up enough. So I'm going to move this up a little bit more. Now when I preview this, 
and I type in here, you're going to see it's more or less the same. In fact, it looks pretty much identical. Okay, now we don't need this actual text input field anymore. So it was positioned at Y12. So we're going to get rid of that, and I'm going to move my mock text field up here, and we'll put it at Y12. And I'm going to get rid of the text that's in there. What I want to happen is, as I type, I want it to add one character at a time. And something that I've had turned off up until now is this image layer. It's a mock keyboard. And essentially what this is, it's a screenshot of the iOS keyboard. So that way, uh, it's just whatever we're going to use. We're going to use this to tap on, on this. And, and it's going to behave like it's the actual keyboard, but it's not a keyboard. It's just an image. Let's put our input container back where it was. So it's right about here or so. And let's take our keyboard and let's move it up so it's right on the bottom here. What we want to do is when we tap the input field, we're going to move the entire in input container up as if the keyboard is coming up. So that's at 437. Let's copy that. We'll undo adjust it. Let's add a tap trigger. Tap and it will be the input container. And we're going to move the input container. Actually, no, I want to tap not the input container, but the input field itself, so the mock input field. And I want to move the input container to Y437. Now when I preview this, tap here, Y437. Okay, that's doing what we want. Now what I'd like to do is I need to count the number of times I've tapped on this keyboard. And if I've tapped three times, I want to show the first three characters. If I tap five times, it's going to show the first five characters of our canned response. So let's add a tap trigger to the mock keyboard. Add trigger, tap. And what we want to do is we want to we want to keep count of the number of times it's been tapped. And we can do that using another variable. So I'm going to create one for the scene, and I call this number of taps. We want this to be a number because we're counting, and I'm going to start it at zero. And every time we tap that mock keyboard, I'm going to increase the number of taps by one. And I'm going to use the assign response to do that. So assign allows us to assign a new value to a variable. So the variable I want to assign here is number of taps. And then I'm going to use a formula to determine what I want to assign to it. So I'm going to type in number of taps. And then say plus one. So what is happening here is every time I tap that keyboard, it's going to take whatever the current value of number of taps is, add one to it, and then assign that back to the number of taps variable. So every time I tap, number of taps will increase by one. And we can see that in action if I turn on the debug here. So whenever you create a variable, if you hover over the variable name, you have this little uh, ladybug icon that, that appears when you hover over it. When you click that, you get this green box, which shows you whatever the value of that variable happens to be. And you can see when I preview this, and I tap once in the box here, that every time I tap, that is increasing by one. We're going to use that to determine how many characters to show in the text field here. So let's add another trigger. And this time we're going to do a detect. And we're going to detect every time the value of number of, va uh, number of taps changes. Detect, number of taps. And what we're going to do is we are going to put a text response. So our mock input field, we want to update it with whatever, however many characters of our canned response has been tapped so far. So I'm going to use a formula for this. Formula. And I'm going to use something called the left formula. And the way left works is it gives you the number of characters from the left end of a bit of text. And the number of characters that we want is however many times the keyboard has been tapped. So if it's been tapped three times, then I want the first three characters, H-O-L. If it's been tapped five times, it'll be H-O-L-D space, etc. So here's how it looks. I'm going to use the formula. I'm going to type left. An open bracket. This is how Protopy knows you want to use a function. And you need to tell it what your source of the of the text is, and that is text to type. And then you need to tell it how many characters, and that is number of taps. And then you close it with uh, another bracket. Now let's preview this. I'll tap once on my input field, and you're going to see every time I tap on my keyboard, it is giving me a mock readout. Of what it is. So it doesn't matter where I tap on the keyboard. It is giving me the the canned response that we created at the beginning, one character at a time. All right, that's great. 
But what I'd like to do is now, so once I've tapped it all out, once I have gotten to the end, on the very next tap, I want this to now be added into my conversation. So I want a blue speech bubble to fly in from the side with my message. I want this box to clear away and I want my keyboard to go away. Let's add that now. So we are going to make a decision on this detect. Right now we're just adding the each character one at a time and we get to a point where there are no more characters to add so nothing else gets added. Let's make a decision. We're going to make a condition and when the number of taps is less than or equal to, and I'm going to use another function here. So in my formula, I'm going to use the length function, the length of text to type. And whenever you use the length function, that'll give you the number of characters that are in here. So text to type is, say it's 22 characters, this will give us 22. So whenever the number of taps is less than 22 or whatever the length of our phrase is, I'm going to add one letter to it. So I'm going to take this text response and put it under this condition. Then what I'd like to do is add another condition. And when the number of taps is greater than, and I use a formula again, and the same formulas I used here, length text to type, I'm going to copy this. When it's greater than the length, I'm going to do something else. And here is where we're going to make the end of our animation. So the first thing I want to do is I want to assign the value of our pre canned phrase into our blue speech bubble, which is this box off screen over here. So we are going to use a text response. And we want speech bubble. I'm going to use a formula. And in my formula, I'm going to say text to type. And if I start typing, I get my autocomplete here. Choose text to type. Then I want to animate this bubble in. So we're going to move it to right about here. And that is x98. Move the speech bubble to 98. Let's just preview this and make sure it's working as we expect. So I'm going to tap a bunch of times. Hold tight. I'm on. Oh, I didn't, I don't know how to spell here. We're going to fix that in a second. I'm on my way and then one more. Okay. The, the speech bubble fl uh, flew in. Now you notice I have a typo here. I'm one my way. That's not what we want. So the nice thing about this is we can change this and we can change this to anything we want. So I'm going to change this to I'm on my way, spelled correctly. And now when I preview this, hold tight. I'm on my way. Boom, flies in. To complete our animation, let's clear the text field and move the keyboard out of the way. I'm going to add another text response, and in this time, I'm going to use the mock input field, and I want to give it empty text. You could do it like this, but Protopie doesn't like this if you just leave this blank. So in order to give a text box blank text, you have to use a formula. And the formula is two quotes, like this, or sorry, two double quotes, like this. What this is called is an empty string. It's a programming term. And this essentially means a zero length bit of text. So no text, no space in between. And the last thing I want to do is I'm going to reset my input container. I'm going to move it back out. So now let's take a look. I'm going to type or I'm going to tap on the mock keyboard a bunch of times. Hold tight. I'm on my way. And then one more, and you would instruct the actor to, to tap on the send button. Hold tight, I'm on my way. And the bubble flew in, my text field was cleared, and the keyboard moved out of the way. So let's now turn off this debug. We don't need it anymore. Everything is working. I'm going to show you how you need to do a few little tweaks on the device to get this to work correctly. So let's run this. Now you can see I'm running this in uh, on my device here, and I'm using QuickTime to mirror my phone. I'm going to tap once on the, the input field here. And as, as I type on here, sometimes this can happen. And that is um, essentially the way that the Protopie player works. Yeah, two finger double tap brings up the menu to um, uh, the bring up menu in here. So you're going to need, let me reset it here. So two finger double tap, I will restart it. You're going to need the actor to type slowly and deliberately. I'm on my way. And then one more tap, and we're going to hit send on here. The other thing, let me reset it. The other thing that we need to be cognizant of is that if I tap on something that's not actionable, oh, 
actually I already have this configured so let me put this back to whatever the default configuration is so you can see what I'm about to talk about here okay we'll go back to here and let's run this again okay so when I tap on here if I tap somewhere else you're gonna see that you get the tapping hint that's this orange box that's showing up uh, on here this can ruin the effect you don't want to see that so if they instead of tapping on the keyboard they tap up here by accident uh, you're gonna see that orange up here so the configuration you want to make double tap on the screen here is we're gonna exit and I'm gonna go into the settings and I'm gonna turn off the touch or sorry I'm gonna turn off the touch hint you may want to turn off touch points too this is the, um, the the white circles that show up on here so if I run it again and I tap once you're gonna see you get these white circles that indicate where it's been tapped could ruin your effect as well but you you can hardly see it when they're actually tapping on the device itself um, the fingers actually get in the way but if you want to turn that off you can so let's exit out of here go into the settings and I'm gonna turn off touch points as well we'll go back to studio start it again and now we have this working as we like now because this is the danger here is that they actually might do this and bring up this menu uh, you might want them to type a little bit slowly if you want them to type a bit quicker uh, a better solution here is to have a bit of a shorter message now the great thing about the way that we set this up is this is configurable you can change this message to whatever you want so if your script changes or you want to now make this a bit more succinct so let's say I want OMW for on my way now I run this on my phone it's still gonna work so one two three taps and the fourth one sends the message on my way all right we'll reset it and now when you type it quickly you can do that and it's a lesser risk of you bringing up the the protopi menu here there you go easy as pie I just showed you how to do mock typing with a mobile device, but let's say you wanted to use a physical keyboard, say a desktop computer or uh, with a laptop, you can do the same thing. In my Pi here, I have a mock web browser and uh, the actor would be typing in a URL into the address bar here. The concept is almost identical. I have a variable here called text to type and it has protopi's web address in here and i have a variable called number of keys typed which will keep track of the amount of keys that i've typed along the way the only difference here is how we do the input and instead of tapping on a mock keyboard we're just going to count the number of times a key press has been has been pressed using the press trigger so i'm going to add a trigger press and i'm going to add the letter a here and then with the letter A, I'm going to assign a value. So to my number of keys typed. And in my function here, I'm gonna say number of keys typed plus one. Now that's all well and good for pressing the A, but we'd wanna do this for uh, all the other letters as well. So I would have to do say B. And this is the bit of the downfall here with this idea is you would have to set up every single letter on the keyboard. Now, I'm not going to do that for the sake of the video. I've actually already done that. So let me remove these two and I'm going to enable this group. This group has all the letters A to Z and uh, the numbers one to zero, and they all do the same thing. They just increase the value of numbering keys by one anytime you press it. And there we go. When we preview this, I have my uh, my walk web browser and I'm just going to type just random things and there we go once I'm done typing it detects that I'm at the end of my typing and simulates loading the website in my browser if you're having trouble in one of your pies and you'd like to ask us for help please check out the link in the description below we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching as always